I'm Eleanor Thompson and I'm one of the lecturers in the School of Science and I am particularly interested in photosynthesis and that work has resulted in us getting a grant, getting some research money to fund solar panels in agriculture in Kent. So the campus is in the Garden of England and we have links with a big soft fruit farm here who are helping us experiment with some agrivoltaics and what that means is solar panels that are used in agriculture. So we did some research recently looking at the effect of transparent solar panels on plant growth and now we have this big grant to put solar panels in an actual farm setting. So we have a partnership with a solar panel company and with a farm and in particular we're looking at the effect of solar panels, transparent solar panels installed on glass houses or on polytunnels where we're growing soft fruit. So what you can see here is the solar yield, the electrical yield over the course of today um, on the glass house at the big fruit farm. So this is really addictive data that comes out of these remote loggers every day and we can do this on campus as well. So we have research students who are working on the project as well as the workers at the farm and they're looking at the effect of light on more experimental plants on campus as well as this commercial set of plants at the farm. So the reason for this project is that farms need to reduce their carbon footprint so they need to reduce the amount of fuel that they use and they want to get an electrical yield from solar panels so that they can run worker housing, irrigation, all of the automated systems that they have on farms. We're really interested in applying robotics more in farms so hopefully if you've got all of these solar panels installed at a farm you can use them for your uh, many many needs at the farm. And the thing that's different about this grant is we're using transparent solar panels over glass houses or over polytunnels or on walls of glass houses so we can see how you install them on structures that are already present so the farm doesn't have to buy a new glass house in order to have solar power on the farm. The University of Greenwich has a lot of plant growth expertise, crop expertise, um, and I kind of come in at the edge of this, at the photosynthesis side of things, so I'm really interested in the effect on plants of changing the conditions that they're grown in, but other people involved in the grant are really interested in the application of the solar panels um, and we have many members of staff who find this project useful and interesting because they want to apply post-harvest technology, use the power from solar panels on the farm to do chilling or processing of foods. Hi, I'm Kevin Lamb and my research group here at the University of Greenwich is working on developing uh, novel methods for um, transforming chemicals into other chemicals but instead of using toxic and expensive reagents. We are mainly using electricity on one of the devices um, we are using. We have basically replaced toxic um, and as I said expensive chemicals by simple two electrodes and we're using electricity to achieve uh, quite challenging transformations that sometimes uh, are not actually possible using normal um, chemical methods. We are really working across the fields. We are not only dealing with transformation of organic molecules, we deal also uh, with anti-cancer research, still using our knowledge in the field to develop greener uh, methods to develop anti-cancer reagents. Um, and recently we have also been involved with the European Union in developing methods to uh, work on producing green hydrogen and couple that to uh, the development of anti-cancer drugs and other um, bioactive compounds by using electricity and I really really uh, invite you to get in touch with the university if you are really interested in what we are doing and would like hopefully to join us in the future. So my name is Cyril Kiaku. I'm a first year PhD in the University of Greenwich. Uh, I'm, I'm originally from France so I've heard a bit about uh, Kevin Lamb research and back in France and so I decided to come here to uh, for my PhD program. So I'm working on uh, electroactive uh, compounds along with Professor Kevin Lamb. So um, I've joined Professor Kevin Lamb because he was working on uh, pharmaceutical compounds and my hope in the future is to work into uh, a pharmaceutical industry. 
to make more drugs and uh, using the way of electrochemistry uh, we can do cheaper um, drugs and as well a greener work. Hello, I'm Professor Daniel Durumis at the University of Greenwich uh, and I'm a professor in uh, pharmaceutical technology and process engineering. Our uh, research focuses on uh, 3D printing technologies and applications for uh, uh, healthcare. A major part of our uh, research uh, lies on the development of uh, pills uh, for um, what we call personalized medication. Uh, so practically uh, the design and development of uh, pills can be adjusted to meet the individual uh, needs uh, of uh, each patient. Uh, as an effect that uh, this will have uh, an improved clinical uh, uh, performance for the uh, patients and they will improve their uh, treatment but also the quality of uh, life. So this is very uh, important because we can uh, adjust the amount of drug substance and also we can customize the release of the drug in our uh, body. We also work with uh, large pharmaceutical uh, companies for the uh, introduction of these technologies at uh, the point of care, uh, mainly hospitals and uh, pharmacies. So eventually in the near future, the patient will consult with our uh, clinicals, uh, clinicians and then they would uh, be able to uh, collect the medication from the pharmacy store uh, or at the, uh, at the hostel. Another uh, part of our research focuses on the development of uh, uh, medical devices. For example, we design and print uh, uh, drug eluting stents, and stents are used to open the arteries when they are blocked. Currently, the uh, commercial uh, stents are uh, comprised of um, uh, metals or uh, alloys, and once they open the artery, they will uh, remain in our body forever. So the concept behind uh, 3D printing stents is to actually print polymeric stents, which are uh, strong enough to uh, maintain the artery open, and after a couple of years, they will disappear from the body because they are biodegradable. Another uh, area of uh, our uh, uh, work is to print what we call uh, micro needle arrays. So these are tiny uh, needle arrays which are very uh, small, less than one millimeter, and they can effectively pierce the skin without causing any pain, uh, without damaging the skin, but also they don't hit any nerves. Uh, as a result, they can be used as a platform to administrate uh, a lot of uh, different drug substances through the skin, which is the largest uh, organ of our uh, body. So recently we used uh, uh, micro needles to administrate uh, insulin for diabetic uh, uh, patients uh, in order to avoid the skin damage uh, because of the repeated use and also to, uh, for people that uh, are afraid uh, needles so they don't adhere to their medication. We found uh, uh, in a clinical trial we found that um, these uh, micro needles can administrate insulin uh, quite effectively and have equal or even better clinical uh, uh, results compared to the subcutaneous injections that we use at the moment. So briefly this is our uh, research at the University of Greenwich and uh, what we do in our 3D printing labs. Thank you.